we did was, um, in order to try and engage the kids a bit more using the iPads, I had, a, uh, had the class there come up with a little storyboard situation where they need to look at the life cycle of a plant, uh, right from soil prep through to harvest, and then create a little video on how would they, how do they prepare the soil. And the kids then got the iPads out and filmed each other either hoeing or looking at the fertilizers or using, showing what tools they had. But it was only a sh short little program. And then rather than trying to do the whole thing from start to finish, just look at, okay, just do the fertilizer for now and then break, and then come back in and re-decide, okay, what do we do next and then do the next part. So it's not a massive task that they've got to try and undertake at a time. Fantastic. And, and how will you use the QR tags? Well, the QR tags then will be the thing that will be, allow them to self-direct for starters, but it'll also break it up where they can, okay, here's a new piece of technology, go and scan this cat tag, and it might say something like, um, I want you to show me a pest that attacks this particular plant, and then maybe link off to some websites, uh, and they come up with one pest, how to control it, what it, uh, and so forth from there, but it, it, a short, sharp sort of uh, a project that they could get involved with. Fantastic. And and the functionality of these QR tags or the apps that's running them is actually being able to um, request information from the students as part of that scan process. So what kind of information do you think might be requested? Well, you could do anything from, like, like I was just saying about pests and diseases, but even through to uh, what sort of soil type have you got yep. and be able to then, okay, look up some websites or something or even do soil testing through links to different pages that we could set up um, that would then lead them on that directed learning but using very much a, a technology base which the yep. kids are very au okay with. Yeah, fantastic. And as part of that, um, they'll be able to uh, take video and upload it. Absolutely, and there's nothing the kids seem to like more than sticking themselves on the video. I reckon that's awesome. Fun. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks, Damien, for that. Great. No worries at all. Okay, Damien, um, we're here just with a small garden patch here. So what have we got here? We've got two things in this bed. We've got some broad beans here, and you can see there's a couple of mist, but over the other side there we've also got a, a, a row of peas. Fantastic, fantastic. And when were they planted? Uh, they were planted probably about four to six weeks ago. Okay. Uh, we're right in the middle of winter, just the start of August at the moment. Yep. Uh, so, yeah. Ago now. Okay, so why did you plant them in August? So why did they get planted in August? Well, one of the things we did was we got the kids to actually research what was able to be planted at that time, and these were a couple of things that were, that came up that were available to plant. So that's why we put them in. Fantastic. And what kind of pests do you get that that are... around here? You can probably see some of the calling cards, um, but we get wallabies here, and they tend to chew off most other things. You'll notice the the greens are fairly well. Uh, sorry, the peas are fairly well pruned. Uh, but they're leaving the broad beans alone, so they're, we're finding out also what, uh, what is resistant or what, uh, what things that uh, wallabies don't like to eat, and we're able to grow them here. Cool. So what are you going to do about this? Well, we've actually got Bunnings on board, and they're going to help us out with building a uh, wallaby-proof area so that we can actually plant more gardens down on that area down there. Fantastic. Excellent. Thanks for that. No worries. Okay, uh, what we have here... This is the primary school uh, that's, that's working on this sort of thing. It's integrating all the way from kindy through to grade 5-6. But the grade 5-6 teacher, Mr Dean Prentice, has been the, the driving force behind this. And he's negotiated with me uh, in getting some of the materials. We had a couple of garden beds that we weren't using down at the, uh, in the garden site down there. So he's brought them up here and it's, uh, it's creating a flow-on effect for the younger grades to see then that Horticulture is something that's useful within their own uh, school and they've been really excited about coming up here and they come in their old clothes and they have a really good time. Even even the soil that they've got here, they've dug out a, a mound of soil from the path here and then they've used sieves down the bottom there to sieve out all the rocks and then used that same soil in here. They've done a lot of hard work um, and it's not finished yet. This is uh, going to develop up into uh, possibly getting fruit trees possibly berries and we'll put them down the back of the school but really integrating uh, the horticulture side of things into the school. Fantastic, thanks. And how, and, and how will technology help, do you think? I think it adds that, uh, that wow element where kids will come along and say, hey, look, there's something there that I can scan and then they grab their, probably by that time they'll have their own iPhones and things, come in, scan that and then all of a sudden, oh, this is this sort of plant and this is where I could grow this perhaps at home. 
uh, because the, the, the essence of what we're looking for is people who want to take what they've learnt at school here but then apply it into their own backyards or even their own community with a community garden. Cool. That's great. Thanks, Damien.